live with my special guest, Valia Brand. Brand, how's it going? Good, to, uh, doing good, Joe. Great to see you, man. Thanks for having me on here. I really appreciate it. Great to see you too, brother. I know that uh, Matty Allen is still going with Crypto Grandma. Uh, he's. I just want to give everybody a little bit of time to get over here, so I'm gonna just kind of. Oh, oh, I gotta mute the D live. Sorry about that. Oh no, it's all good, man. Yeah, I actually need to go to the D live as well and just confirm, uh, so we can all look at the chat because because the chat is the chat is super entertaining when when you're doing a live stream. <laughs> Yeah, I usually keep a window open with uh, – I have to use StreamYard inside of Chrome, and then I'm used to using okay. Firefox. But I, I can't sh use this green screen with Firefox, so I have a window open with Chrome, and then I have DLive open in Firefox. That way I can see everything that's going on. I wish that stream. I wish StreamYard would integrate the chat into DLive. You know? Yeah, they always ask, like, when you're, when you're doing a stream – like how did the stream go and and that's always one of the comments that i mentioned like let me have the d live <laughs> TT server on on the normal comments so i don't need to keep going back and forth so often you know yeah nice brand so you got the new setup going i know i heard you you were uh, we were talking earlier about your your gaming laptop and how's it working out so far you know it's it's going good man it's going great actually so i've had this setup for a little bit less than a week and about six days now and and the, the microphone's the same the only the only upgrade that i've made yeah is that is that laptop but but i wanted to get something that was like overkill for for what i was doing and that way if in the future i want to maybe do video editing or just more intensive things then hopefully the the laptop can kind of keep up with the changes so it's been working pretty well man it's it's a good little setup and it's uh, it's nice to to have that opportunity to you know use some profits and things like that, or just money that I had set aside from before uh, on things that are going to upgrade my channel and the experience for the users. And you, I saw that when you were showing me earlier, you have an external camera as well. So other than the laptop, it's how does that work? Is it it's something that's difficult to set up or pretty easy? No, actually, it's 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 uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I've got a uh, maybe I can do the mirror on my phone, but, but yeah, so it's just a USB, USB webcam and it just plugs yeah straight into the computer. And, and I've got that set up on like a, like a tripod stand type deal, like a mini tripod stand, but I can maybe, maybe you can kind of see a little bit in the camera, the, the yeah. actual tripod stand that it's, that it's on. And, and so, so anyways, yeah, not, not too much of a, uh, upgrade, but it's so much better than just the the webcam itself because that doesn't get the wide angle shot uh, that 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 the webcam would do versus that. So nice. So, how how does it plug in? Is it uh, USB or? Yep, exactly. Yeah. Just via USB, and then same thing with the microphone, uh, straight to the USB as well. So fortunately, this laptop's got like four different USB ports, you know. So. No, uh, awesome. no extensions there. <laughs> nice. Exactly. Yeah, I, I saw you guys uh, last Saturday with Nardo. That was really awesome. I yeah. love Nardo. Nardo for the win. If anybody isn't following him, how was that stream, oh, yeah. Brand? Uh, yeah, it was actually really good, man. And and you're honestly kind of the one that like inspired me uh, to do that type of a st style of stream because cool. For for like the most part, my stream was just kind of like every Sunday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I'd kind of just do my own thing and my own rant. But, yeah, after seeing, like, you doing the streaming and kind of diving into people's more, like, personal stories and, and things outside of Hex, I wanted to do something similar with, with Nardo because he, he wanted to come on and, and just have a stream before. So, so I wanted to, like, set it up in that kind of uh, manner or precedent and – yeah, no, your show kind of inspired me to to do it that way, and I plan on doing that doing that in the future too. Getting on some other people as well that that you've talked about, I think like Bit Finesse or Freddie Quoth and things like awesome. that, that we can kind of uh, dive a little deeper and and find out more about their life aside from just hex. That's a great idea. Yeah, I love I love being able to. Uh... You know, I, I know everybody from Discord Syndicate, pretty much Hexologist 24-hour stream, so it's nice to be able to 
work with everyone one-on-one and get to know them a little bit better. Uh, Brand, you mind? I'll be back in 30 seconds. I just, sure, uh, my yeah. puppy's making a little bit of noise. If you can oh, take yeah. it from here no, for a good. second. I'll Thank hold you. down the fort. All right. So thanks brother. guys, we're going to, of course, man, we're going to cover some comments guys. So I see we got David feeder in the house. Uh, we got Jay. He says, hi tech. I'm trying to stream on my VIC 20. Okay. Uh, I see. And then we're going to go to the D live chat real quick here too. So, um, yeah, yeah. Once again, thank you to uh, to Joe for the opportunity. Him and I are going to cover a little bit of uh, I don't know my story. What did I do before I got into Hex? How did I find out about Hex? And uh, we're just going to be talking a little bit about the when when you're when you're patient and you have the right opportunity uh, approach you. You know, do you do you keep just sitting on your thumb or keep sitting down, or do you take that opportunity? with the time that you had prepared and do you launch at it 100%. And that's kind of what I did with Hex. I was in a lot of other cryptocurrencies before Hex came out. And I'll tell you what, it's uh, it's nice to be in something that that I don't need to trade. I don't need to do any of that other stuff. I can just earn the interest stresslessly. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. For sure. Knew I could rely on you there. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dog do you have? She's a blue healer. Um, oh man, that's cute. Are you familiar with that breed? I I never heard of it before. I just before I just uh, adopted her. So I've got three older brothers, and yeah, my uh, my oldest brother when he was in high school, maybe like seven years ago, had a blue healer. It was mixed with something else, like they usually are. But yeah, it's a cute dog, man. The ears are very like distinct. Yeah, yeah. She. I went to go adopt a puppy, and. I was going through a tough time and I had never heard of that particular breed. So, right. you know, I asked to hold that, my dog, Iris, her name's Iris. And nice. I asked if I could hold her and then I asked what type of puppy she was. And they said a blue healer. And I said, okay, that's, that sounds like it's right up my alley then. So that's she's, cool. she's got a ton of energy. She's a, a breed that needs to get a lot of exercise. No. Yeah. I, uh, I've definitely experienced the same thing yeah, with my, my oldest brothers, his, uh, he was always trying to play and, and his dog was a guy, but yeah, same thing would always try and play. And I guess they're good. Like they're good, like hunting dogs for some people. They've kind of been good hunter dogs. So yeah. The point about them needing to get rid of the energy. They're Australian cattle dogs. So they're used to biting the feet of cattle to, to corral them in, you know, on a long journey from one place to another. So when I first got her as a puppy, that's what I had to try to teach her was to not bite everybody's ankles all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's that that's a good thing to good thing to teach. I mean, yeah, to your point. Uh I, I bet that was kinda hard to maybe get it out of their habit. Like was it muscle memory yet for, for the dog or Oh, absolutely. That was definitely ingrained in her deep. Um and I have two little girls, a two year old and a four year old. So I was nervous about her being with the girls. So I spent a lot of time to make sure when I first got her that she she knew that was unacceptable. So uh, she le- she learned pretty quickly, and then when she finally met the girls, she didn't hasn't done that at all. My one daughter, my youngest, uh, was right before she turned two. She was still in diapers, so uh, she did bite her diaper a couple times and try to you know pull her down that way. But she's yeah, she's been yeah. great. Nice, dude. That's awesome. I'm uh, I'm gonna check Maddie's show and see if he's still going, Brand. I, I don't know if sure. heard that yeah, somebody. He- pro- Go ahead. Oh yeah, no. I was just gonna respond to a children of the of the grave. His comment on on D Live was that the sound is a little bit low. Uh, maybe maybe on on my end at least. Maybe if you can just verify, or if anyone else in chat can verify that, uh, you know, maybe it sounds better when I'm closer to the mic. I know sometimes different audio inputs can kind of. You want to take it back off of auto and just turn it up and see what it's like. Yeah, let's let's try that. Let's let's see what he says. All right, so children of the grave, hope, hopefully that helps. I mean, it's off the auto adjust volume. It's on just the manual. So it's at 150%. Hopefully that uh, that's not a problem that everyone else is experiencing too. Guys, what we're doing tonight is we're, we're just hanging out, waiting for Matty Allen's show to end. He's going a little bit later uh, than, than expected. So Brandon and I are going to get into our, you know, our show for Joe Hexotic Live. And then if, uh, if anybody wants to come on after that in about 60 minutes, maybe 90 minutes from now, if you'd like to join us for a hangout 
know, it's Saturday night. You're more than welcome. We'll send out the link in about, uh, like I said, 60 to 90 minutes. So thank you for being here. I know Brand called out some people, but I just want to say again, thank you, David, for being here. Jay, Children of the Grave, Abracadabra, Old Man, Papa Boner's here. So got to love that. I don't, I don't know if you got a chance to hear last night, Brand, on, on Discourse. I told Papa that we have a Troll of the Year award that Children of the, Children of the Grave and I are going to give out on a Monday night. So we gave uh, Papa Boner and... Ross Hex, a buy into the championship. So I'm going to nominate four other people, Cookie Boys for sure. I was thinking Big Kurkowski. If anybody else, you know, has any ideas, I was going to put up a Twitter poll to see that, you know, who would win that first and second place to be able to join Papa Boner and Ross Hex because they are, you know, they're my favorites by a, by a little bit. So. No, that that's cool. I, uh, yeah, I was listening to the, the discourse syndicate and it's cool that you guys are doing that. I mean, one of the great things about the hack community is, and yeah, read max 77. Good to see you as well. But one of the cool things about Hex and kind of what your show is, uh, is based around from what it seems is, yeah, we're not just sharing what we have in common in regards to cryptocurrency and Hex, but, um, you know, I'm trying to point out that it's cool that even with the trolls, like we've, we've got good trolls that are, are willing to, to be appropriate enough and, not to the point where you need to just ban them. Like uh, everyone in the community kind of plays their own part and, and the, the trolls are definitely entertaining at the very least. And, and uh, if anything else, they've, uh, they've come on the discourse syndicate show um, cookie boys has at least. So it's cool that people see like, not just like trolling behind a keyboard. Cause anyone can do that, especially under an anonymous username. But right. if someone's actually willing to come up on camera and, and, uh, share their story or just uh, even defend their own opinion, then that's much more brave in my opinion. So good for them. Yeah. I have a lot of fun with those guys. Uh, I saw one night that I think the show you're talking about children came on with uh, cookie boys and then T hex. Exactly. And so those guys were on for a little bit and uh, you know, I have a lot of fun. It's, it's sometimes I, I feel bad that maybe we're detracting from the show cause we're having so much fun in the chat, you know, but it's uh it's great to, it's, you know, it's great to have a laugh and then also be learning what's, what's going on as well. So. Yeah. I mean, to your point, there's like the main show, which like right now would just be you and me talking, but there's almost like a separate show uh, to your point in, uh, in the chat. And I know uh, I was kind of, at least in the comments on the Maddie Allen or all in Allen, uh, the Maddie Allen with, uh, with Kareem where, uh, where, yeah, we're like, okay, is Maddie got a bag that he's peeing in or is he you know, just making all these jokes about him being so patient while Kareem's going on his rant it was pretty funny to, uh, to uh, listen to. Yeah. That was the most fun I've had uh, in a chat that, that night for sure. It seemed like Maddie had to have a catheter going and didn't get up <laughs> for four and a half hours. That was amazing. Exactly. No. And that's one of the cool things about the hexagon specifically is not only when talking about Hex, but it seems with Kareem when Maddie was talking about him that uh, you you get just this passion of fire of um, of the response. Like we can we can talk about a lot of things other than just Hex, and you can you can usually see the passion in uh, in the person's eyes or about what they're talking in their voice. And it's cool that we can all do that together and and learn from each other's experiences because. You know, you've shared a lot of your personal experiences and and for other people as well. I think it's easier to relate to someone when you can share uh, something in common like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's why I love David Feeder and, and you, Bram, because I, there's there's not many people in our community that have so much passion about Hex. So I, I really appreciate that. And uh, I wanted to say also, you um, you I remember a lot of names from before I started streaming just from the chat because they would help answer questions and things like that. But uh, I wanted to thank you especially because when Maddie and I first started out, you were the first person that reached out and were so supportive in just every single possible way with with everything we could have hoped for. You know, I, you offered your help to to if we had any questions on streaming, if um, you know, we started to share the links as soon as we share. Uh, excuse me, started the show. So it was really cool. You, you made a really good impression on me and you, you continue to do that. So I just wanted to 
Thank you, uh, thank you, Brandon. Yeah, no, no, I appreciate it, Joe. I mean, and I think it's kind of like an example for any of the other hexagons. Uh, even if you're not, everyone kind of has, as far as like an ecosystem that RG3 talks about, that they that they participate in, like that they bring to the table. And even if someone is not not like behind the camera and kind of like representing uh, physically, I think it's important to share. Uh, share the links with your audiences and have different social medias that you share on because it just lets the other hexagons know like, Hey, there's, there's this new person doing a stream. Let's welcome them into the community. Like, uh, like we've done with other hexagons. And yeah, it just kind of sets a good precedent because like I said, even if I wasn't streaming and doing my normal thing on Sunday at 2, 2 PM, I would still be sharing out, uh, everyone else's content uh, to the telegrams, to the social medias, because sometimes when you're doing a stream and like a solo stream, like myself or David or hexologist, sometimes you can kind of be overwhelmed with just trying to enter entertain the audience that you forget to share the, the actual links to it, which is almost is more uh, almost as important. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've been there. I'm, I'm trying to get a little bit better being proactive with it. So I got. I did tonight the um, the scheduled stream for Streamyard, so that there's a a picture on YouTube and a countdown till the time. Uh, it's the second time I've done that. Unfortunately, both times I've done that, I don't hit the countdown time because I'm I'm following you know somebody on that particular night, and we end up going late. So I, I think right. maybe I should just add that in the comments from now on that this is the the approximate scheduled start time. We're going to try to wait for the show that's on, um, sure. you know, and do that. But it's it's nice. I saw uh, Cabana Crypto do that. This is how I knew it was possible. He's got the countdown for his Friday night um, happy hour show, which is great. I saw I saw Vince on there, Big Kurkowski, and I was psyched to see those guys play uh, fantasy football. And I just got into that last year. What was really cool about it is, you know, it's normally a league that you play with guys and girls and there's a winner every year. And if you play for money, you know, money's dispersed that year. What's cool about what big Kurkowski came up with is he staked out hex for 15 years. So we're going to have a 15 year long league in which the overall grand winner of that league is going to get, you know, the, the big prize of the staked hex 5,555 days from when he staked it. So that would be a, a crazy amount of interest and, you know, price go up and be nice. So, that's a no, really that, cool idea. Th that is a cool idea. And just Hex in general, the way that it was designed, the way that it was developed, and the way that it is now, I think is very unique. And yourself and Maddie, I've heard Maddie mention it a lot that like with, with Hex, you're like paying yourself in the future. And he's really good about articulating it in a certain way. But but um, when I first started like joining and participating with the community, uh, myself and maybe a lot of other people were kind of thinking like, yeah, hexologist, hexologist is great. And it's cool that he's doing a stream every day, but is this all just going to end after the big payday, you know? And it yeah, was cool to the see that, that didn't happen, you know? So. Yeah. Thank, thank God. Uh, he sets a, a routine up for everybody. You know, you know that no matter what's going on in your life, you can check in it for me at six forty Eastern standard time PM. And then, uh, you know, we all sort of, build our schedule around that, make sure that we're conscious of discourse syndicate going Monday, Wednesday, Friday night, starting at 10 PM Eastern standard time. Right. And that was a, you know, I've only been in hex for, you know, four going on five months now. I can't say it's um, when I got to go on the 24 hour stream, when I got to go on discourse last night, I can't say it's a dream come true in the sense that, you know, that normally makes sense because it's such a short term, um, you know, goal of mine, a thought that that would potentially happen. But last yeah. night was, uh, was incredible to go on with RG and, you know, he's helped me through so much through so many different times in my life and just in this short, short period of time. So to, to be able to be on screen and get to talk with him, get to thank him. And, uh, you know, that's, that's my favorite show is Friday night hangout. I absolutely love the content on there. And, you know, I, I think I'm, I think I may have mentioned to you before, um, just in chat, but I was really, really, you know, excited to see what you did last Friday. 
uh, going on and having your own stream that night. And, and that must have oh, been really yeah. cool to have RG show up, pop on and, and, and hang out. And Motley was there too, right? Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's true, man. I'm and and I do agree. Um, yeah, I think I've maybe done that one other time where it was kind of just like a spontaneous stream, and and RG three ended up joining, which is cool because I don't even know how long it's been. Maybe it was like March or something. But RG three was the first hexologist was the first show I found. But then RG three was the first show that I found that you could actually like participate and like join in on a Friday on a Friday night basis. And I thought that was really cool because um, a lot of times you see like it might be really intimidating for someone that's never put themselves out there to uh, to join such a show. But it was really cool. The uh, the, the first time that I joined, um, you know, you got the, the hexagon family that's that's uh, opening and, and they're welcoming. And, you know, we know how to ha we know how to have fun and like play with each other and, and prod and stuff. But it's never to the point that someone should feel like embarrassed for coming on or, you know, people should have that opportunity without feeling like embarrassed to, to come on. Like the community is, is opening and welcome for, for anyone. So it can be intimidating. I was, you know, I'm glad I was able to get up the practice I have recently to overcome that anxiety because there is a, a level of anxiety that when you go to hit that, you know, broadcast button, go live, something that, you know, happens inside and, the past yeah. nine weeks that I've been doing this, I've been getting a little bit better every time, but it, it wasn't till last night that I was able to join the F and hangout. I've, I've had that high level of anxiety where I wanted to, but I just couldn't, I, I didn't know what I would say. I've, you know, and, and now, uh, RG was so welcoming and thank, thankfully Papa Boner was on there last night with me and then Maddie came on. So it was really comfortable to be on there with Maddie, you know, and then, and then Bitfinesse showed up and what a, what an outstanding amount of entertainment I had, you know, last night because of the way that RG interacted with Bitfinesse. Bitfinesse couldn't hear RG. So it was, it was a lot of fun. No, that, that was a dynamic that I've never seen before in a, in a discourse syndicate stream to your point where, and I've never experienced that, but yeah, I guess StreamYard on mobile to RG three's point that you can only hear the other people that are on mobile, or sometimes you can't hear all of the street streamers and, that was an interesting dichotomy with, with, uh, uh, with Maddie kind of being like the bit finesse whisperer. And, uh, <laughs> that was funny. And, yeah. and all of us other guys. <laughs> yeah, that was really funny. Ryan's here. He says, "What's up, guys? Thank you, Ryan, for joining in. Good to see you, brother. That was a lot of fun." I was gonna say. I know you kind of mentioned uh, before we went live that people like uh, like Ryan and, and Silver the Antidote did did a decent live stream the other day and. And uh, I, th I think it's cool what the community is doing. Like I said, myself and Nardo, that was that was kind of like my first like interview style or kind of not hex uh, only focused style of, of stream. And and I'd like to I'd like to do more of that. And like I said, people like Freddie quotes said they're willing to come on a uh, bit finesse and and Kareem and, you know, the same people that yourself and Maddie have kind of talked with. But. But we all kind of have our own different styles of communication. And and sometimes when you're on a stream, you might cover one thing, but not another. So it's cool to hear people like Kareem go on Maddie's show and he'll he'll disclose information that he didn't on Discourse Syndicate's show, you know? Right. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the dynamic between Maddie and Kareem. Uh, Kareem is so energetic and has so much to say and is so creative and intelligent and his take on Hex is brilliant. So it was nice to see, you know, Maddie interact with somebody with that intellect and, and that understanding of Hex. And I think they, they provided a great amount of entertainment for sure. For sure. Well, and, and people like Kareem, you know, they, they definitely get it that the longer pays better and, and up to, uh, to three times the shares and things like that. Like people like Kareem definitely get it. And, and yeah, it's, it's inspiring to, have people like him on a show or to listen to him when he's on other shows, because to your point about like the fire and the energy and, and the excitement, like you could, you could never pay, in my opinion, you could, you could never pay someone to have that level of like authenticity or like type of energy, you know, uh, cream is definitely 100% authentic and he, uh, yeah, he brings a lot of value to the table. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so who was saying over here, Papa Boner was saying that funding Jim 
He's telling me the same thing you were telling me, Brand, that Funding Jim made a video about the Hex Broadcaster TV Guide and uh, just let, asking if Maddie and I, and, and, or maybe possibly you and I, Brand, if we can add to that if you're not already in it. Are you, are you in there? Um, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't know if there's actually a separate channel. I know, uh, yeah, our, I know uh, Funding Jim did make a video of like a schedule and I asked him to get myself in there as well. But, but that's actually a good point. Uh, I have talked with Gary about that once just to let him know like hey not just rg3 or uh or hexologist but you know i do this every sunday but um no to your point that'd be that'd be good to talk with gary because because i saw that he uh he was doing something else with uh with another streamer and it's like oh man it'd be it'd be kind of nice and nothing's ever perfect no one's ever going to time everything perfectly or or not step on the other hexagon streamers but but it would just be nice to uh be able to join all of it live and, and participate in all of it. So, so I think if we can all be on a somewhat similar schedule or at least have an idea of when other people are streaming, then that might be, might be good for the, uh, the viewers as well. Yeah. You could see even right now, you know, Maddie and I are a team. Um, Maddie's one of my great friends and uh, it's a, it's a funny place to be. I don't want to start the stream with, without him ending. I know also I can put myself in Maddie's shoes and I know he doesn't want to end the stream while grandma's on with him. You know, if you, if you're having a good conversation going, it's tough to just be like, you know, like he did with Bitfinesse last week. He, he goes on maybe later than expected. The time is only, you know, 75 minutes and then that's up before you know it when you're streaming. So it is difficult. And, uh, I'd love to, to get into funding Jim's guide. Um, I'll do that tonight when, when we get off air. And I'm, I'm also trying to create uh, hexlive.tv. Is, it'll be a, a website so that hopefully, you know, I can share that through Twitter and everybody else can share that. And it would essentially be, you know, the, the live stream schedule of recurring hexagons that, that have a show um, that they're going to remain at that time slot every week. So I, I know that there's going to be pop-up streamers all the time surprise streams and those are a lot of fun i think that's where gary's schedule really comes in is important because that way we can really make sure we're not overlapping there mine is just a little bit different in the sense it'll just only be recurring so i'm not going to be promoting the surprise shows like like uh you'll be able to find out in that so it's both resources are great for anybody to follow and mine's only in the works gary's is, is functional right now so definitely check that out no, yeah, that was one of the recommendations when I, because when I first started streaming, it wasn't until recently that I started an actual schedule where people can rely and people can kind of expect what time to see me live. Uh, because before it was just kind of like spontaneously and sporadically and a couple of times a month here, one time a month here. And Hexologist, thanks, thanks to him, but he was always recommending like, hey, man, what, what worked for me was, was having a schedule and, and having people be able to rely on, on when you're coming on and, and to also follow through with it. Like there's people that talk about doing something and then there's people that actually do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's a routine. The punctuality of setting a time builds trust. And then in building that trust with the community, you know, you can really uh, count on interacting and, and building something great. So Hexologist set an unbelievable example for me to show me his work ethic and then stick to it, you know, no matter what's going on through in his life. It's, it's incredible what he sacrificed for, you know, his family first and foremost, but for the Hex community after that, he's, he's an inspiration to me for sure. A thousand percent, man. I mean, to, uh, I think RG3 mentioned this the other day, but yeah, through, through like COVID, through his his wife having a kid, like in, in giving birth, he was he was on the mobile stream, and uh, even if it's only for five or ten minutes, like that that's not the point. Uh, to your point, the the point is that he he does what he said he was going to do, and when you're on a a live stream basis that's daily, that's uh that's definitely a lot harder to commit to. So for someone like Hexologist to to still have your family events and all these other things that happen in your personal life, but to still stream on a daily basis and uh, at a similar time is, is really inspiring. And I uh, thank the hell of thank thank him a lot for not only like being a leader, but helping, helping the other people as well. 
because he uh, he got RG three into into Discourse Syndicate and um, RG three mentions before like him watching Hexologist and kind of wanting to do something how his show is now, but he didn't really know where to start and he ended up messaging from from the story that I can recall. RG three ended up messaging Hexologist and they kind of worked with each other to to start to start uh, Discourse Syndicate, and then RG3 kind of took it over from there after it got started. But Oh, I didn't yeah. know that, Bram. Yeah, yeah, that's what happened. In Hexologist, he, there was, there's a time or two where he's kind of, like, appeared on, on the show and kind of, uh, you know, either helped moderate or, or helped provide more value. But it was really cool to see that Hexologist not only had his own show for his, uh, his daily show, but... He was willing to help out RG3 and, and other people that I've talked to as well, like Joker or or even Hexologist has mentioned that if any of us Hexicans want to start a stream and kind of get get to learn get to learn the ways, then someone like himself can can show us a, a few pointers. We got uh, children children saying that there's three hex streams going on right now. So I know about Maddie and I because we you know we communicated and I understand we're overlapping. And again, I apologize, Maddie. Uh, I don't know who the third one is. So the, the Gary schedule, and Firebun, yeah, Gary. Gary and Firebun are going live. Oh man! <laughs> no, I, I, I saw that like a minute into the stream. It's like, oh shit, dude. <laughs> oh, that that's stinks. I I thought that was earlier in the day. Uh, I, I guess not. I guess not. Oh, okay. So, so. Well, that stinks because I'd love to be in both places, you know, all three places at once. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll start coordinate that schedule. I, Children says he's here because of the schedule, and we're sticking to it. So I appreciate that. Okay. Um, you know, we're we're kind of waiting for Maddie's stream to get officially done to get into the show, but I guess we'll do some some working behind the scenes for next week. I'll coordinate more with funding Jim. Um, and certainly Maddie, so we, we won't have this this problem again. It's David Morales says I don't have enough computers to see all three of you. So uh. <laughs> exactly no, but but um, but yeah. To your point about the uh, you know the other streamers and whatnot, like I think it's cool that Hex is a little bit over a year and like a year and a month old and things like that. But it's cool that we already have that problem. I mean, obviously, no problems are, are great, but. If you're going to have a problem, it's it's nice that in the community, like the theoretical problem is, is everyone else streaming at the same time. And it's it's cool to see so many hexagons, uh, like so, something like your show and the show that you do with Maddie, I think are are kind of more so the, the point that I'm trying to make, that it's not just hex and staking and quattro cinco and all that, but but it's also the things like your mental health or the the uh, fish oil that Maddie's talked about with the 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 brain pro properly functioning and things like this. And it's nice to uh, you know not only participate in these other streams, but to to learn a lot of information from people that are experienced as well. Just want to quickly thank uh, Reed Mark for the ice creams that's been going on since we started the stream. Thank you, Papa Boner. Thank you for the ice cream. Hex Live for the lemons. Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Brand, I'll, we're uh, about a half hour into the show, so I'll just, I guess we'll we'll start if that's cool. I'll I'll sure. say my yeah, satisfied it, prayer, and then we'll get into okay. to some some personal talk about you, and then talk about Hex. And like I said, if if anybody's just joining us, we're gonna open up the floor. Uh, we'll send out the invite to the stream in about an hour. If anybody wants to join us, hangout style, you're more than welcome to. Uh, especially if you are going to be presenting at the hex conference and looking for a little bit of extra practice time this, this would certainly be the time so thank you very much um and just to get started this is the set aside prayer god please help me set aside everything i think i know about myself my disease and you god so that i may have an open mind and a new experience with all of these things please let me see the truth amen amen so I want to thank Valiant Brand for being here. Um, Valiant Brand's been a big inspiration to me since I first started with Maddie and Hex Therapy Live, which is on Thursday nights following Hexotic. Uh, Brand is a prominent member in the Hex community, always, always supportive of new Hexicans, of OG Hexicans, uh, sharing other people's 
stream schedules on Twitter, you know, cutting up videos of uh, great parts of people's live streams so that we can get those little pieces to digest when you don't have hours to sit back and watch a whole live stream. So Bran is on YouTube at uh, youtube.com forward slash Bally Brand. I'll turn the, the banner on here for a second. Also on D Live, same thing, Bally Brand and Twitter, Bally Brand. So great job getting your name the same across all the different platforms that, that I'm a little bit envious of that. Good man, good man. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's true. I mean, and it comes, comes back down to like an experience thing from, from the user standpoint uh, when it comes to having like a username and, and trying to be consistent across all the other ones. Cause fortunately Ballet brand, you know, just Brandon Ballet, that's my name, but Ballet brand was kind of just condensed and I've always used that, but it was nice that, uh, yeah, that you're able to stay consistent across the, the other platforms. Cause sometimes like I'll, I'll look for say like, like big pep, at least like he was just getting on Twitch recently and I typed in big pep and it, and it wasn't going, but you got to type in like big pep and then crypto or things like that, that can, can uh, slow down people if they, if they don't realize the full username, but, but I appreciate it, man. Yeah. I've had my YouTube channel for like 13 years now. And for the longest time, I just made random videos or cooking videos that, that would kind of interest me at the time. But uh, up until recently getting into hacks and following Richard Hart, uh, I was pretty, pretty nervous about putting myself out there and not hiding behind an avatar um, because of the things that can have, uh, that can happen in crypto and doxing and swatting and stuff like that. But took the leap of faith. And uh, I tell you what, life has really, Hexo kind of mentions this as well, but not only ever since getting into Hex, but ever since like live streaming on a consistent basis, um, you know, the quality of my life has definitely improved significantly. And uh, it's nice to, to feel like that you might be helping someone else, someone else out a little bit too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Cookie Boys is in here. He says, what's up fellas? What's good? Uh, thank you for being here, Cookie Boys. We just started. We were hanging out, you know, just getting to know one another better. Waiting for uh, how you doing, Yash Deep? Welcome, brother. Waiting for Maddie Allen and Grandma Crypto stream to end. Uh, again, I apologize, Gri Crypto Grandma. I apologize, Maddie Allen. We wanted to just start hanging out, waiting for you guys. Um, you know, not step on toes. Maddie, you and I will certainly do a better job next week of coordinating. And Maddie, if you didn't hear, also Firebun and Funding Jim are on right now too. So. The, the community will, will work on that coordination for everybody at home. And thank you, Maddie, for joining us. We just got into to Bran, uh, you know, letting us know a little bit about himself and got the set aside prayer to the side. If Again, I'll say it again. We're going to open up the floor later for uh, you guys to join us if you want to come in for a hangout in about an hour. And uh, Bran, if you don't mind just telling everybody, you know, myself included, your experience with, with getting into Hex, what, what life was like a little bit before that, how you found out sure. about Richard Hart and, and Hex, what your first stake was like, and, you know, take me through the whole thing if you can. Sure, man. Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to. So Richard has kind of answered the question too, like how he came across Bitcoin and things like that. And it was through Reddit that he was mentioning, um, I, I believe, was kind of how he found it. And long story short, yeah, I... The first crypto that I got into wasn't Hex. It was it was something else. Uh, it, was, it was Litecoin. And long story short, I kind of stumbled across like silver and um, precious metal investments. And one time in the, the Reddit sub form, someone mentioned digital currency or this is the the if Bitcoin is digital gold, then this one's the digital silver. And so long story short, in uh, in let's see, March of 2017, was when I got into crypto and I've actually been under an alias for like until I got into Hex. Like for two and a half years, it was just some some uh, old coworker that I used to work with that I used as my alias, uh, not wanting to put my face out there and in my name. But um, Richard Hart was kind of the first really, really influential person that that uh, that I came by in crypto and. He, uh, he, even for someone that might not, might not be interested, he, he catches your attention. He mentions uh, social signaling a lot. And 
why he's got a candelabra or a big, big chain and, and these other oh, yeah. things in the jewelry too. And I think it's cool that not only does he know neuro-linguistic programming and, and kind of how humans work, but he was really good about from like just the thumbnail. If I didn't know who he was, I was interested to like find out more. And so I started following Richard's content and he was super, uh, he was very like Bitcoin maximalist at the time and just pretty much followed his content for, I don't know, two and a half, three years, kind of just absorbing as much information as I could. And someone like himself, I mean, he's still an OG and he always will be an OG, but it was cool for someone like myself that was just getting in in 2017 to learn from someone or to at least listen to someone that had been mining Bitcoin when uh, at, at 50 blocks, 50 Bitcoin per uh, per block. Like someone like Richard has been in since 20, 2011, at least he mentioned. And um, so that was kind of like my first instance of listening to Richard Hart was in 2017. And I didn't initially get into downloading the Telegram and the Strape and, and all of these other uh, social medias that he he has and runs. But when I got into that, when I finally downloaded Telegram and, and joined the other um, rooms that he was running, I realized, oh, there's a huge community that he has kind of like fostered and that he has kind of established and created from, uh, from just what he talks about. And um, so, yeah, just been following Richard Hart. And I guess how I got into Hex, I was pretty much, RG3 mentioned something similar uh, after 2017. Uh, a lot of people got wrecked holding on, to, holding on to projects that were promise coins or things like that, that, you know, as an investor, you, you think it's going to go to the moon and, and do everything it said it was going to do. But the reality showed that it was a uh, overvalued market. And, and uh, in 2017, towards December, it definitely started getting devalued to the point um, of a bear market. But, um, but yeah, so got into Hex. And when Richard had mentioned he was going to create something that was a digital certificate of deposit and things like this, I, uh, I really kind of dug in with, with both with both hills and uh, pretty much said like, this is my, my saving grace. Like I'm done with all these other cryptos that I've been wrecked on. And uh, let me just throw, throw out all my Bitcoin and crypto into this one, to this one product from the person that I have been able to uh, gain enough trust and feel like I understand them a little bit. So kind of put all my eggs in one basket. And, and I know it's uh, contrary to, what other people talk about in, in traditional finance and traditional investments. But I truly think Hex, it is, it is that story where like this time it's different, you know, at least in my opinion, from the investing standpoint. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, how I actually got into Hex on, on day one, when Richard had mentioned, I think it was like December 2nd, 2019, there was there was like two different days. There was like day one for like claiming if you were a Bitcoin holder before then. Um, and there was like day one for the adoption amplifier. And I uh, consolidated all of the other cryptos that I was into Bitcoin, did the snapshot and then sold all the Bitcoin for Ethereum and kind of averaged in to, as best as I could averaged into the adoption amplifier. But I guess one of the things I want to tell the people about I guess one of the things I want to be able to tell people about is similar to Hexologist. Um, he mentioned that before he started streaming and before he got into Hex, you know, his life was not uh, where it is now. And it was similar for me as well. I mean, like I said, I'd, I'd been wrecked on a couple of different projects and, and lost some money here and there. But um, it was really cool when I got into Hex. I never thought it was going to be more than just a cryptocurrency or like investment but it really has become more than that. And the actual community itself is something uh, I've never seen, not even just in crypto, but I've never seen ever a uh, such an authentic community become fostered so quickly. And uh, a lot of us share a lot of similarities with each other that
that make a uh, um, you know a strong project uh, product and a strong community. Oh yeah, yeah. I would say um, I've never experienced anything like this community in my in my life. You know, I'm from a, f- a fellowship and a twelve step program. I have a you know a group of guys I, I'm close with in, in a Bible study. I grew up playing hockey. Uh, I love the camaraderie and all of those things. You know, and there's there's something special about the Hexican community because for me, as a no coiner, it was difficult to onboard. Uh, I didn't have any understanding of how anything worked when I was first sending my ETH from Coinbase to my MetaMask. I was scared. You know, is it even going to show up on the other end? Uh, it's taking a little while. What's going on? I had to just use you know a leap of faith to to get into hex. I made my first stake and then I started watching videos of Richard and I've never seen, I've very limited in my life. Have I seen a man so intelligent been able to have a mastery of such a difficult subject for a layman to comprehend. And he breaks it down with such a, an ability for that person as a layman myself at the time. and, And still, you know, I'm still learning. He breaks it down so eloquently and easy for me to digest it. You know, and and because there is a little bit of an IQ test to get into Hex, the community that's in here that is uh, investors in Hex, we've all passed that IQ test. That means that we are a level of intelligent investors that perhaps isn't in any other community. And we also bring a lot of creativity and we've formed quite a family you know, around Richard Hart and the product of Hex. So it's it's amazing that, um, you know, we have this outlet right now for you and I to get to know one another and that, you know, Richard, I, I used to remember when I first onboarded, I was looking for content all the time, trying to find, is there going to be a Richard stream tonight? You know, I, I, hope, I hope he's going to come on, you know, I hope he's going to come on. And it's nice that he just pops up every now and then and then provides, you know, four to six, sometimes even longer than that, hours worth of content. Uh, it's really cool. I want to say hi to Benny. Benny Blanco's in here. Uh, Brand, my dog. Joe, my dog. We're doing this. Computers are a scam. Papa Boner says. <laughs> um, Bit finesse. Damn, neither neither of you gents understand how important you really are to the world. It's adorable. The world desperately needs you to. I think he's he's got to be talking to Benny and Children of the Grave. I, he can't be talking to you and I, Brand. So maybe he is. Bit finesse. Thank you for being here, brother. That was really, enter- yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, that was really entertaining last night, Bit Finesse. You bring in a great dynamic to our community. Everybody really enjoys it. I'm um, looking forward to, you know, I believe it's next Monday night that Bit Finesse will be on here with me. So I know Brand would would love to have you on as well if you guys are, mm-hmm. you know, trying to make that happen. And yeah. we got a, a lot of great people in our community that are willing to show their faces, you know, and and have a. You know, I don't have my real name. I don't know if I ever will, um, but I am willing to show my face. And it, I think it goes a long way that our community doesn't use, you know, a, a voice changing software for when we come on for anything we do. Our founder doesn't, you know, do that. His face is out there. So I I really enjoy our community. And it's amazing that we have, you know, people like Brand to, to welcome us all in. He said, like I said before, he set such a great example for me that, um, I don't even know how you knew that Maddie and I were starting brand when we did, because it was like, you were right there the first night. I wish I, I wish I had my finger on the pulse like that. So I could be there for the next hexagon. That's, that's just starting out like you were. Honestly, I don't even know either. I mean, I know, uh, Richard, I mean, he's, he's great. He's, he's, uh, he's always on social media, but honestly, I don't even remember how I found your guys's channel. And it might have just been from someone else because Richard was the sometimes he'll like make a tweet and say like, oh, it's always cool to see new hexagons coming up. Or, oh, that's right. This is a yeah. new hexagon. And, and I know he did that with Big Pep. Um, and honestly, I think he might have been the one that maybe mentioned you guys. I mean, I'm not too sure. But but yeah, part of part of the success in Hex and with the community is primarily the community. Uh, as someone that's got three older brothers and and uh, my mom and dad did a did a pretty good job of of raising myself and them uh, one thing that we were always taught cuz we'd play football and 
and do a lot of sports sports things growing up. But one of the things I really believe and agree with is you are only as strong as your weakest link. And so say in, in Hex, for example, if if the if the weakest link of someone that's trying to provide value and trying to be a streamer, if you see something that that you can help them with to to not be a weaker link, then uh, then that's just going to make the community as a whole much stronger. And, and that's kind of what I've taken, taken it up to myself to just um, try and share as many people that that are streaming live or or that are posting new content. Um, even for the people that that aren't behind it, that aren't doing like live streams per se, like the one person I can think of right now is Hexadecimal. But on uh, on Telegram, he's pretty active and he's kind of active in like the, the meme department or the kind of special effects and things like that too. So for people like, um, for himself, Hexadecimal or people like Alan, uh, a bit underscore Hex, I think those those people uh, are really are really valuable to the community because they can they can provide things that that I can't do like uh, Alan with his his uh, photoshopped steroid picture of me I wish that I could say awesome. that that was legit <laughs> <laughs> but um you know people like that they they make the community what it is and they make it just so uh, uh, so inspiring to to continue producing videos. Yeah, Abit's Abit's one of my favorite hexagons for sure. The content that him and Hex Lion create is absolutely top notch. Abit went from, from my understanding, not knowing Photoshop, bringing that skill on himself, and now he's creating memes where he is creating the artwork itself inside of Photoshop. It doesn't look like to me that he's grabbing other people's artwork. It looks like he's actually drawing everything. So that's amazing. Uh, I just want to thank Matty Allen for the diamond before you guys rock. Uh, Read Mark for more ice creams. Sylvain Cloudier, Cloudier, probably Cloudier. Thank you for the ice cream, Cookie Boys. Thank you for the lemons, brother. Benny Blanco, thank you. Read Mark again with some ice creams. Thank you guys for the lemons as well. Uh, Brand, I got a, a question for you here if you're comfortable answering it. I know it was hot news the other day on Twitter, so oh. I, know, I know we were joking about it before, but if you just want to clear this exactly. up for everybody, here's your chance. Yeah. Uh, so the question is, how did Brand's girlfriends take the news that they were all getting hex for Christmas? <laughs> well, sad disappointment. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's just girlfriend singular, but but yeah, when when I was making the video, sometimes it is kind of hard to distinct, like okay, uh, like my girlfriend's wallet or my girlfriend's. I, I don't know for for whatever reason, there was a little bit of a miscommunication. Maybe it was in my communication, but yeah, it's just just girlfriend singular. Um, I think I was referring to my girlfriend's hex wallet, like something like that. But it got misconstrued as my many many girlfriends, <laughs> which uh, uh, yeah. Luckily, I like like uh, doing one at a time because I think if you had more than one, I feel like that'd just be too too much of a handful uh, personally. But <laughs> had to had to had to uh let everyone kind of run wild with their imagination for for a little bit and then and then let them know <laughs> well brand i i know you very you know i feel like very well but we just met not too long yeah. ago yeah. you know and i can't imagine that you you wouldn't be a one woman type of guy so it, the right. what can happen when you post when you do something like that if there's a slip of speech if it's misunderstood if you post a you know a comment it can either be ignored it could be all out trolled in a negative way, or if people really love you, like the community does, then we have some fun, you know, poking at you a little bit. I don't, I don't think that anybody really thought out there that, you know, you had multiple girlfriends, but it was a lot of fun <laughs> that we had that day. No, exactly. Um, yeah. To your point. And, and yeah, as someone that's mentioned that I've got three older brothers, uh, I'd hang out with their friends a lot because the people that were always in my age and like, even the, the people that I considered friends, uh, I always kind of liked hanging out with the more mature people. And even if my brother's friends were, they were m more mature. I don't know, from an age standpoint, uh, I kind of learned a lot of my maturity and a lot of like my growth and stuff like that from, from, yeah, listening to, to people that are older. But the reason I even said that in the first place is it's cool that the community itself, we, 
we do feel comfortable to to joke with each other. And sometimes we'll let you know when it's when it's over the line. I mean, I know Papa kind of mentioned his comment last night uh, about uh, about his interaction with myself and kind of regarding Richard and and the only reason I stepped in so strongly in uh, in regards to his comment was uh, as someone myself that's been like when I was a lot younger dealt with being like significantly overweight for like a lot of my my uh, my young childhood that was kind of like me as a younger brother stepping in for for someone that couldn't uh, defend for themselves so it's cool that we can all grow together learn together and joke together but at the same time with people like RG3 he's done this to me where uh, where sometimes I'll let you know like hey dude that wasn't appropriate or you know kind of just kind of <laughs> let them know what, what's going on so it's good that we've because it, it takes a, a bit of like bravery to to be the one making the joke and then it also takes a bit of bravery to be like hey you know that wasn't cool or you know it takes it takes uh one from each side so it's it's cool that we're uh none of us are like taking things personal or or uh, getting our feelings all sorts of hurt um the majority of us can really realize like uh, this is kind of like any other family except when you mentioned that like you kind of like know me and and uh I, I feel the same way like this is my first time being on your show, but I watch your show every time it comes out. And so thank you, Brian. Through, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Um, but, but similar to how I felt like I know Richard, even though we've never talked, he's been on stream a couple times with me, but I've still never had the, uh, I never chose to, to ask him any questions mainly. Cause I was just like, star. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> Absolutely. Shit, got, like, like, like you were saying, like for, for RG three to come in, it was, it was, it was that way the first time, but when, uh, when I was on stream with Richard and he's like, so does, does any of you other guys have any questions? And I think it was on discourse syndicate and, you know, there's like 10 total people. Uh, it was kind of one of those moments where it's like, no dude, but thank you for all you do, man. Like, thank you uh, for creating such an opportunity. Um, Cause one thing Richard talks about is he didn't design hex to, to be fun. Like he didn't, try and make it fun uh, in its design intention or its game theory. But it's cool that what it, what it turned out to be as a complete product, it's cool that we kind of fostered uh, it to be fun or it to be what it is. So it's got a lot of intentions that Richard didn't uh, initially intend, but it turns out to be uh, a betterment for the product. Brand Bitfinesse donated a, nin a Ninja Gini. Thank you so much for that, Bitfinesse. I really appreciate that. You're the man. He says, tell Brand that his brashness serves as proof of work and enables my trust. He's glorious. I, I couldn't agree more with you, Bitfinesse. Yeah, Bitfinesse, I'd, I'd love to have you on a stream sometime sometime as well, man. Um, as I was saying, I've only done one, one stream, specifically with Nardo, that was this kind of layout in this kind of environment. But I really, you know, really appreciate you doing your show because uh, that kind of inspired me to do one one episode with another hexagon, and it's something I'd like to do in the future um, as well. Like do more shows that are similar to this, and and have people like Bitfinesse or or really anyone that wants to come on because um, after a while you kind of fall into your own niche, and and someone like Hexologist, he's kind of he's kind of taken the. Uh, I don't know the stance of of uh, of the daily news and, and updates and things like that, but for uh, for myself, it would be kind of cool to have a show twice a month or once a week that was similar to this, where you you get to know more about the person that's not just talking about hex. Yeah, and Bitfinesse, if you're gonna uh, come on both Brandon and I show, please save the guns and uh, everything else. Not not for me. Save them for Brand. Uh, I'm just fooling around. I know Bit Finesse is all fired up last night. Um, he he's, brings a lot of fun, a lot of firepower, you know, to to the stream. So the it's great to have you come on with me, so I can get to know you better, Bit Finesse. You know, just like Brandon and I are talking now. And um, you know, if you want to reach out, if anybody wants to reach out to Brandon or I, I'm sure we'll periodically ask for guests. Um, you know, just as a whole, like on a tweet, uh, eye contact usually directly through Twitter and see if people are interested in it. But if, um, you know, if I haven't contacted you yet or if Brand hasn't and you have any interest in coming on either of our streams, you know, please reach out to us. 
on Twitter or brand, whatever your preferred form of contact is. And uh, read Mark. Matter, thank yeah. you. I'm sorry. Twitter, Telegram, Twitter. Read Mark. Thank you for the ice cream again, brother. Bit finesse. Thank you for the diamond. He's saying will do. Uh, so brand what's, um, what's going, what do you have in store for the next month regarding streaming? Are you, are you going to stick to, uh, Sundays at 2 PM? Is that a, a weekly time for you? 2 PM Pacific yeah, I mean, time? Yeah. Uh, that'll be kind of like, cause when, when Hexologist told me like, Hey, you should kind of get a schedule. Uh, that was like the time that I could, could make time for was on the weekends. Uh, cause on the weekdays I'm, you know, working a full-time job and stuff like that. But, but, um, so yeah, to answer your question, yeah, Sundays, 2 PM Pacific standard time. I kind of just, uh, a lot of times just do like a solo stream and just cover a lot of the comments and, and, you know, talk about the week's recap and things like that. So tomorrow we'll do that. But, um, but, but yeah, I, I do, I, I still want to do the thing that I've normally been doing, but like I mentioned earlier, I, I want to get more of the hexagons on and and kind of just get to know them a little bit better as well. Because sometimes you wonder, like, okay, where can I provide value? Um, is it on stream or is it off stream? Like, is it is it on stream and, and trying to educate or or answer the questions, or is it off stream clipping other people's content or sharing and stuff like this? And um, yeah, I, I think it'd be cool. Cause like myself, I'm a very personable person. I like to uh, communicate and, and get to know people better and learn from their experiences. Uh, so yeah, to answer your question, Sunday, 2 PM Pacific standard time is my normal stream, but uh, I do want to branch out aside from that time and, and do something similar to this. Cool. Yeah. I was looking forward to having you on specifically because like I said before, I was having a lot of anxiety going on streams and, working with someone like you with David feeder all the time with Maddie. I know that that would be, uh, you know, I could put my, I could rest at ease knowing that if I was ever at a loss for words, you know, you'd be able to jump in and save the stream. And it's really cool that, that immediately from the first time I've seen you, you seem really comfortable on stream. So for any new hexagons out there, like Hexarican says, I'm in the Northeast. I would love to stream, but I'm bashful. Uh, you know, I, I understand that. I'm sure Brand can understand that too. And you know, you're like I said before, you're welcome to to reach out if you want to join us sometime. If you want to come on tonight, uh, I'm going to send out the link here, maybe 10, 15 minutes. If uh, you know, if anybody wants to go get their hair and makeup done and, and join us, uh, well, you know, it's a well, good night. Well, and to the person, I didn't see that one specifically, but to the person, kind of like judging themselves and things like that, uh, or even for yourself having some anxiety. Uh, I think we all kind of get that. I mean, humans, we're all, uh, we've got a lot of similar hardware and, and anxiety at least, uh, is something that everyone goes through. And especially when I was joining RG3 stream for the first time, it was on an F and hangout and it was, it was, I don't know, six months ago or something, but, but it was really nerve wracking. And I'll tell you the thing is, it was um, really assuring that uh, what happened was kind of how I, how I thought. So even though I was anxious and even though I was kind of still getting used to the stream yard, you know, people like RG3 and, and dollar cost were very welcoming and, and accepting. Uh, I was just reading one of the comments that I looked blue, but uh, people were welcoming and accepting uh, to that. So I guess that would be one thing that, I want to say to anyone, um, Big Pet mentioned this specifically that uh, Richard was kind of the person that helped him get on onto streaming and and that he started, uh, you know, doing weekly videos. But for anyone that's got a little bit of anxiety and stuff like that, for me personally in life, um, whether it's say with anything, with a with a job, trying to ask for a raise or trying to ask a girlfriend out, like you're never going to get what you want if you let that anxiety just overcome you. Uh, because a lot of times you are your own worst enemy. And if you, if you don't just nip it in the bud immediately, it'll, it'll kind of amass into something that's, that's fictional. It's not even, it's not even real, but um, you can be so convinced of that anxiety and of your psychology that it can, you know, make you afraid to do things. 
when uh, when in reality you should just take the leap of faith you know absolutely you know i we were going to talk about confidence tonight and i think that anxiety is related to that it's something that i've always struggled with was having self confidence um sure. all of a sudden it just kind of built like a snowball which is sort of what's happening with my confidence in streaming you know the the first time when Maddie Allen and I went on I was I was like a deer in headlights especially because Richard showed up in the in the stream and um yeah. you know it was I didn't even know what to say and even now every time um when Maddie and I go we follow the hexologist and we wait for his show to end I have a tremendous amount of anxiety over that period of time because sometimes it could be, you know, 45 minutes before when we think he's going to end and when it actually ends. And so yeah. it's, it's something that, you know, if I, if if I could just share with anybody that it is like a snowball and you fake it till you make it, put yourself out on a limb, have a leap of faith and just give it a shot. Uh, I can't tell everybody how, how good it feels to have anxiety about like going on with discourse syndicate and then conquering that anxiety. And then when, you know, when I actually got there and RG is so welcoming, you know, if you go on with a host like brand, like David, like Maddie, everybody is so welcoming that they, that anxiety dissipates very quickly. So, you know, the invitations out there guys. And uh, just to go through the, the chat a little bit, cookie boys, thank you for the lemon read Mark again for the ice cream. Thank you, brother. Uh, Maddie says he's going out to get his hair done uh, to come on with us. So uh, yeah. thank you. And um, David Morales, we need makeup, you know. And, oh, David says, why does Bran look blue? And what happens is I have this problem at my house where I am right now. I I look red a lot. I, I'm, I'm not as red as I am right now. So you have warm lighting and you have cool lighting. And I know I know, David, you're just joking, but if anybody's out there, starting to stream and concerned about things like this. I don't have front lighting. I'm, I'm just sitting in the dining room at my parents' house where I am down on vacation in Florida. There's a, a, a light up with like candles that are all pointing up at the ceiling. There's nothing facing me and they're warm colored lights. So they make me look very red. Bran, you obviously have a cooler lighting system. Is it overhead from you as well? Or do you have lights facing you right now? Um, I got one of them facing me over kind of in this direction. And then, yeah, I've got a separate lamp right here. That's where that light's coming from. And then, and then one that's just right diagonal from my laptop. That, nice. That's there as well. But, but I mean, the, the cool thing about listening to the comments and, and to your point, even if they're just being facetious or just uh, kind of just side swiping you is, is that a lot of times, it's easy, especially if you're anxious to like take those things like personally or like, wait, do I really look blue and things like this? <laughs> a lot of times you can, uh, you, you know, you can, you can take the positive and the negative uh, feedback from, from the chat to, to improve your own stream. I mean, if we, uh, if we didn't have children of the grave mention the volume, then he would have just kind of on my volume, then he would have kind of just sat there idly and, and maybe no one else stood up to, to say, that the volume was low. So right. Um, especially for like, like that classroom scenario where like uh, someone's like afraid to ask the question and things like that. A lot of times when the teacher does pick on that one person that was brave enough, a lot of times everyone else had that same question. They just weren't willing to, uh, you know, to, to be the only one. Yeah, absolutely. I was, I was watching, um, I was showing my mother and my father because they have a TV that can get YouTube so I was putting some of the streams on there so that my mom could watch and she was watching David and I, and she's like, and right, just like right now, it looks like I don't have teeth sometimes because there's no front light on me. So she's like, Joe, you got to do something about your teeth. It doesn't even look like you have teeth. I'm like, mom, I, I, I don't have front lighting here at this house, you know, and I'm back home up in the Northeast and I'm sitting in my throne. I made a nice little streaming area where I have lights that are like right next to me off camera that are pointing at me an overhead light. I, mean, I don't have anything special for streaming, but it makes quite a difference. You know, it's, it's cool to, to think about, you know, posture, like with Maddie and Bran, you know, you guys are known for your great posture. So Papa brought up last night how, you know, he's always thinking about sitting up straight as he's watching you guys and me too. Um, I have terrible posture. So to be, to be counterpoint with Maddie on the posture contrast is, is a tough thing. So I, I learned from you guys and, 
you know, even, even with the way the cameras play straight now, you know, I, I want to look not too big, not be too close to it, but also not be too far away. And it's, um, you know, it's just cool to get that feedback from everybody. So I, I appreciate it. And, uh, I love, you know, busting balls. So if, if you guys, yeah, you know, exactly. I love them, I love them. Papa is going off and, you know, if you guys have jokes, you know, keep, keep bringing them, David, I appreciate Same. David Morales, you know, being, having some fun guys. So thank you. Well, one thing you mentioned earlier about the confidence thing and, and, and yeah, I think everyone's been in, in a very similar scenario where you're dealing with anxiety, whether it's before an interview or whatever the scenario is. But one of the things you said was like, fake it till you make it. And I can't tell you, uh, I mean, things like that, when you hear them, it's like, yeah, that's cliche. What kind of weird stuff is that that you're into? But uh, when you, when you actually do, when you actually do try it, like, and you, you do make an impression to, to work on it. Like, uh, cause like I mentioned, I used to be like overweight for like a, a large t- time of my like childhood and was like really, really negative on the, the self talk and the, the thoughts about it. And the reason I've got this posture that I have now is from people make fu- making fun of me of being so, you know, slouched and, and slumped over. So, so I think sometimes whether it's like positive or negative, um, I think a lot of us can, uh, for maybe things that we don't excel at, you can kind of put yourself out there and, and fake something because um, the fake it till you make it thing is really, like I said, in just the uh, in just the posture department, it's really really made a big difference because one thing Maddie mentioned was the 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 omega threes or the fish oil or whatever for for your brain to work properly, and and that's fine if you got the the brain engine firing at all cylinders but if you don't have some of these other things um like some sort of healthy lifestyle or some sort of exercise and things like that then uh then you'll end up lacking in in one department or another Um, so it's cool to have the people comment and the chat keeps you in check man the chat can definitely keep people in check you know so yeah, Cookie Boy says it looks like you're using vegetation lights over there, and I'm using flower lights, and together we're a complete grow. So, <laughs> how'd you know, man? Got some, <laughs> got some plants sitting over there. Yeah, yeah, you caught me, Cookie Boys. You caught me. Yeah, no, Bram, I, Bram. That's funny. <laughs> when I was growing up, uh, I used to to be a fat kid as well. I played hockey a lot, and I uh, yeah. finally, you know, grew into myself through adolescence and. You know, and girls didn't used to talk to me at all. And I felt like inadequate as a, a teenager, you know, a young teenager. And then all of a sudden it was like that changed. And, and I don't know what happened, but I did start faking it a little bit. I started to just go out on a limb and, you know, I, I would help my friends in college with this that were less experienced socially. Um you know, and I would tell them that, that it's, you know, what they're like, what's the secret? Like, how do you, how do you, how do you meet girls? And, it's no different than a, than an interview. Just like you said, it's, you want to, you want to just be relaxed. You don't have to prove anything to anybody, but you do have to, you do have to go out on a limb and interact and be social. So it works like a snowball. You just try it a little bit this one time and maybe you fail, you know, you fail asking that girl out on a date or the way you talk to her is a little weird online, you know, cause these days we're, we're meeting each other online and maybe you fail one time a dozen times, but it hones your skill set. And before you know it, you know, you're getting attention from people that really are the type of people that you want their attention from anyways, you know, because if, if things are working in my experience, the way that I've met, you know, my girlfriends from the past, my current wife, you know, I'm, I'm myself and that's why they like me. You know, there's, there's been women out there before that I've been attracted to and gave it a shot, but like, you know, they weren't really for me. And so, I think that we can can all learn a lot from one another. And that's why I love the hexagon community is because it is supportive. You do have everybody letting you know how you could better yourself a little bit. And I, I saw uh, Hexcong say it to Hexologists the other day on Twitter. Um, you know, it, only a real friend is going to tell you the truth. You know, and, and oh, true. if somebody comes out with a tweet and it's maybe a little bit controversial, like you should follow this person. And this person's been known to hate Hex. That's going to be polarizing for the community. And so, you know, the Hex, Hexologist had a lot of people support him, RG3 included. 
And then there was a, a group of hexagons that, that didn't understand that. Maybe never will. Maybe they don't have to. But the point just being that, you know, that Hex Kong was real enough to Hexologist to, to say that, to give him his perspective. And that's why I really appreciate Matty Allen and I's friendship, because that's that's what we do for one another. You know, we, we provide that truth. And, you know, in the creative community, when we're looking to see where we can fit in with all these other creative individuals, it's important to have those friendships that, you know, that are really honest and can keep us at our best on our toes and in, and in constant improvement. I mean, I agree completely. Just look at your average Joe. Like, uh, I don't know how many people have been in a similar scenario, but I think we kind of all have, which is why I mentioned it. But, you know, maybe, maybe you're at work or you're somewhere and you got just, you just got done eating lunch and maybe you got like a piece of pepper in your tooth and things like that. And, and how many times does the average Joe just, let that slide like they're not the ones to tell you because it might be uncomfortable for them but you know to your point about about being real with other people and, and about being honest uh yeah some of the the people that i grew to be the the strongest friends with were the most critical and were saying things that your average person would be uncomfortable to say but they knew that it would help me improve or they knew that uh, it wouldn't be worth just sitting idly and, and not actually saying anything about it. So to your point, I mean, the community, I think, can, can check us in, in a couple of different ways. You know, they can, they can reinforce the positive things that you're doing. Oh, I like this. I like that. Or they, uh, they might be able to, to help, help, uh, help you with things that you didn't know about, like the lighting. Okay, well, shit, if I, if I can afford a, a new laptop and some of this other stuff, you better get some good lighting, kid. You know, so so uh, <laughs> right. things like that that can can improve the the future setup. Because at the end of the day, the only reason I do my streaming, sure, it's to kind of like give back a little bit, but it's more so to interact with the community and like, what are your guys' questions and and how can I help? So if adding a little bit of light or adding you know some sort of change to the setup can can make a difference for someone else in a positive manner then I'm totally going to take that advice and, uh, and apply it. So I just sent out the invitation to everybody, Bran, if anybody would like to, you know, practice at what we're, what we're preaching right now, no better time than tonight. So yeah. we'll hang out for a little while, keep talking. And, um, you know, it's yeah, great just to, to meet everybody. The other night, Maddie and I did a show on uh, hextherapy.live with Yash Deep. And it was an awesome Christmas Eve show. I, I really enjoyed talking with Yash. I know Maddie did also. He's a great guy. He's really, really smart. And, um, you know, towards the, I thought we were maybe winding down, but we were having a good time. And next thing I know, Funding Jim came on, which was a, an honor to be on stream with him. Um, and then Motley came on. Motley's inv Motley Investor is one of my favorite hexagons as well from the Discourse Syndicate. And, you know, also reached out to me personally and, you know, to offer his, um, you know, friendship if I ever need to talk because he, he knows that I struggle sometimes with depression and, and alcoholism and what a great, you know, what a great offer that was to just extend a hand and let me know that he's, he's there if I need it. So I love being on with, with Motley and on my time in the 24 hour stream, I've always been, I should have mentioned it to funding Jim. I always felt embarrassed because when I watch it, uh, I know who, who funding Jim is. I knew on the 24 hour stream, he, he was somebody on discourse that was on a lot of episodes that helped me get through a tough time. And I was so like starstruck that day to be on with Hexo and RG. And it was so yeah. much anxiety for me that I was like, yeah, when I told the story, I left funding Jim out as far as, you know, these, I'm, I'm so happy that for these guys and especially crypto coffee, I said, and like, I meant to say in funding Jim and I just didn't. And now, you know, every time I watch that, because I'll, I'll, I'll show that that testimony, I'll provide it if anybody's asking for it on like a, a tweet, if anyone asks to support the Hex community and I'll watch it again. And then I'm like, man, I wish I would have called that, that, that guy out, Gary, because he, he helped me so much. Right. So I, I know what you mean. And, and, uh, you know, sometimes it is nice to, to your point, have, have, uh, more practice, like the, the more, the merrier, in my opinion. And, and I see Benny in, in the chat and, uh, 
anyways, Benny's mentioning that uh, they're kind of from like the poker community and, and that they that they got over to Hex, but they were kind of saying like, hey, I'm a little bit nervous to join right now. And, and that's totally fine. I mean, yeah, no one's no one's forcing you to or anything like that. But but um, to to Joyce to Joe's point about having a little bit of anxiety and things like that. Not only is it just normal in every uh, instance of life, whether it is the the girl or the the interview and things like that, but from my personal experience, a lot of times, like the anxiety is way worse than what the actual event is. Like you know, your your mind's playing up one thing and all these different you know random uh, possible outcomes that could happen, and then you go to actually do it, and it's like, oh, none of those thoughts that I had that were anxious thoughts were were actually realistic uh, when it came to the the outcome. And the only thing I want to say is, yeah, um, you know, you're, you're definitely welcome to, to come on anytime, Benny. And, you know, now, now is uh, not your time, but, but don't, uh, don't be afraid to do it in the future, man. Cause like I said, sometimes n- no one's ever going to be like 100% comfortable. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure that when Richard was, was old Bitcoin, Bitcoin OG, uh, I'm pretty sure he might have had some serious contemplation as well of like to come out in the public or to not. And you say the same thing for yourself with the name. And, and that's totally rec- That's totally uh, understandable and things like that. But but I'll just say from personal experience as someone that been on RG3 show a long time ago, it is uh, it is something that you you do get more comfortable with the more you practice. And, and that's one of the things you mentioned. I mean, uh, when I was a kid, I remember very vividly like learning how to ride a bike and stuff like that. And, and I fell a lot of times before I could uh, take off those training wheels. And, and for anyone that, you know, joins the stream, yeah, don't feel intimidated that you need a good setup or anything like that. Just uh, come on for a couple of minutes, if nothing else. And, and maybe we can, you know, hear it, hear a different hexagon's perspective, but, but I appreciate what you're doing, man. Uh, and what the other people in the hex community are doing. It's, it's really making a positive impact and, and a positive uh, effect on not just this community and other communities, but the world in general. I think Hex really, not only is it designed to be global reserve currency and, and start competing with the traditional finance stocks and market caps and things like that, but uh, I really do think that it, it could be the one that's different this time and the one that does what Bitcoin wasn't able to achieve within its 11 years of being accepted. And uh, part of that's the community. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I mentioned before on stream that David Feeder and I are going to do a recurring stream on Saturday nights. Uh, we're going to start once the conference is over, uh, once Hexchange 2021 is finished with. Uh, David and I will start a recurring stream on Saturday nights. It'll be like the F and Hangout. Uh, but cool. You know, I, we're we're much less well known. Um, you know, Bran, you're you're always invited, and Maddie Allen, of course. Um, we all like like Bran talked about with the hex with Hexo's show. He does the news. You know, RG three has a, a lot of fun on Friday nights, and also is, has a, a more intimate show Mondays and Wednesdays. And the rest of us are trying to figure out, you know, how we can contribute without stepping on toes as far as what our content's going to be. Uh, you know, when we're going to go, we're all still figuring this out as a group. So you'll have many more chances to come on, you know, on a Saturday night. Um, we're, we're not going to get into, you know, the news so much on a Saturday night, like Bran and I, you know, Bran has, has his show where he discussed what happened during the week. I go on Thursday nights with Maddie Allen and we talk about mental health. Maddie, you know, has helped me so much through Omega threes, just like brand is, has taken as well. Uh, I can feel the difference. It's been about a month now. I have motivation that I've never had. Well, not that I've never had, but it's been a long time since I've had it. Um, you know, so it, it's, it's great that we're all figuring out how to contribute, you know, where we can, when we can. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the conference a lot. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with hex yet you're just you know just checking out our community for the first time or new maddie allen is spelled m-a-t-i-a-l-l-i-n and if you want to follow him on twitter uh d live youtube twitch and then the conference that maddie has planned 
is going to be at least 30 hexagons, if not 40 hexagons. And it's going to be on January 6th to January 9th. So that's a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Maddie's going to get more specific in the next couple of days with the actual schedule. I've, I've seen what it is. Uh, I, I believe it's finalized with who's going to go on what day and when, what the topics are going to be, what the panel discussions are going to be. But it's going to be like the TED Talks of the crypto space and Hex in particular. So it's going to be, you know, the 24-hour stream was so much fun, and I would be down to do that anytime that there ever is one. Um, it was like a party, you know, and this is going to be a conference online. So it's going to be all of the hexagons that we're, you know, that, you, that you're familiar with. And we're going to be in more of a professional setting, you know, where this is going to be something you can sit down with your family and watch. You know, we're going to keep the cursing to an absolute minimum. Maddie's getting an awesome background prepared for, um, from Crypto Kool-Aid. So it's going to be similar to like RG3's pirate ship and the Joker's uh, train car. I don't know if that's the right word, subway car. So you know, Crypto Kool-Aid makes amazing art for backgrounds. And Maddie's, you know, pushing us all to step our game up um, stream-wise. You know, Hexo and RG3 have talked about their microphones and their video cameras. And I like nothing more than a natural background. So, uh, you know, my, my favorite thing and primarily what I'll use is a natural background. But sometimes when you go on with other people, you know, it might make sense to have the green screen. So I want to, again, thank David Morales for helping me out to acquire the, the green screen. That was awesome of you, brother. I appreciate it. Um, and so if, if you guys want to register for the conference, January 6th to January 9th, if you want to watch that as part of the community and interact, you know, on, on Maddie's D Live, on Twitch, on YouTube, just please follow RG3, Hexologist, and Maddie Allen all three of those people. And that way you'll be able to get the content for free. And Bran, I know you're going to be uh, contributing a portion as well, right? Have you, have you decided what that is or have you worked with Maddie to figure that out? Well, yeah. So I've, I've talked, I actually, I think there's a message that I missed from him that I still need to respond to. Sometimes that that'll happen, man. Sometimes, like I said, it's kind of a good problem, but I don't like to, to uh, ignore people, but man, sometimes there's so much going on in the hex community community that like i'll see someone's message and then okay i need to get back to them if i can't do it right away but to answer your question on on maddie allen's thing um when he when he invited me i was like okay i i'm, I'm definitely willing to i just don't know what to, to talk about so um i will be doing some sort of testimonial i think he said anywhere from like a 10 to 20 minute uh, structured type of video and that's definitely something that i'm going to uh, practice, uh, practice a lot and, and rehearse a lot. Uh, one of the things that Maddie uh, Allen talks about is, is to your point, like um, being professional and just everyone has their own niche as we've mentioned, but, but some people are more professional and, and to your point about swearing and stuff like that, keep it to an absolute minimum. If, if, um, if almost to the point of like, Hey, you're not allowed to come on if, a, if you're swearing during a, uh, during a super big conference like that. But um, yeah, we're doing a uh, some sort of testimonial. It's going to be recurring. So this is you know 2021, then in 2022 we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to be together as a staker class for at least the next 15 years. So Maddie right. fully intends on doing this yearly. Um, you know, so everybody keep that in mind. Like one swear, you know, at the wrong time when a family's watching with a child on YouTube could get a, a strike on Maddie's channel or my channel or Brand's channel. So. Um, you know, when we're going on late at night, I don't, I don't have a problem with anybody, you know, talking, using any words they want. But if, um, you know, if you're watching this now and you're getting prepared for the Hex Change Conference, HexChange2021.com, you know, keep that in mind. It's going to be, uh, it's not, um, it's not like what we're used to interacting with all one another. We're trying to create content. Maddie's trying to create this content that's digestible for professionals outside of the Hex community, as well as for all of us Hexicans to enjoy. And, I know he's put in a tremendous amount of work and, you know, we're extremely lucky as a community that Maddie has a day job. He takes care of that, you know, puts on the weekly show with me. He's doing all these streams like he had tonight with Crypto Grandma. He had Kareem Bitfinesse on recently. 
And then beyond all that, you know, to create this conference for us all to get together, it's a tremendous amount of work. So it's going to be four days. I believe it starts at, I don't want to say the wrong times, but it is at hexchange2021.com. Uh, don't quote me on the time, but I think it starts at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then the format of the show um, is going to be, you know, everybody from the Hex community saying, you know, a quick quick couple hellos um, to get it started. We got Maddie's got Freddie Quotes performing the Hexagon Anthem. There's going to be different panel discussions. There's going to be talks like TED Talks where there's one speaker. There's going to be keynote speakers every night to end it. And then there's going to be some social event, you know, online every night as well, where Maddie, um, I, I forget what it's, what it is through Google or Zoom, perhaps, that Maddie's going to be using. So it's going to be a, a great time. And if anybody's going to be sharing during that, you know, I, I urge you to jump on with Bran or myself or come on to, with Maddie Allen and I, if you want to come on a Thursday night and just try to get those anxiety bugs out and uh you know i'm really looking forward to it and um uh, thank you brand i just want to sure. thank you for being on if you want to you know yeah. show your your channels here or your what you got going on and we'll, we'll wrap yeah, it up yeah, we'll definitely do that um exactly i guess in wrapping up i, I do got one thing i want to say so so yeah it's uh you know no one was able to join us this time which which is totally fine but um, one of the people that said that they were going to get into streaming that they might in the future was, uh, was Benny Blanco. And he was saying that he was someone from like the, the poker community and, and somehow found hex, but long story short, I'd like to hear more from that person in the future. And we might get that opportunity. Cause they said, let's see, he says, yeah, I'm definitely going to be a part of this community. Uh, I'm going to start streaming for sure the next year. And the point that I'm saying this is someone else in the community uh, identity block was saying that they would, uh, they would help him out if, if need be like, if you ever needed to have someone come on stream as well, I believe it was that person identity block that, that said that they would. So, so it's cool to your point that, I mean, everyone has those feelings, whether you're, you're anxious or you're nervous or you're mad or all these different emotions that are very powerful, but uh, especially for someone like yourself that's done the AA like my dad has, uh, it, it's a lot easier to achieve something when when you got someone in your corner that has been through a similar experience. So as far as the, the streaming goes and whatnot, I think I think it's cool that uh, yourself and Maddie are are able to to do your weekly stream. Um, I think we get a lot of like different perspectives, you know, you uh, your experiences and perspectives and things like that, and then kind of Maddie's like psychological kind of mental perspective side of things that are, that are pretty beneficial too. So, so I guess to encourage Benny, yeah, man, uh, you know, definitely don't feel like you ever got to come on or that, that we're going to be like hounding you to do the streams and whatnot. But for anyone that does join my stream in the future or, or Joe's stream or, or anyone else's just know that you, you got, you got a, a lot of support in your corner. You know, we're not going to just, randomly make fun of you or things like that. Like everyone uh, in the hex community, as, as I was mentioning, we're, we're only as strong as our weakest link and hex has had some, some hiccups before uh, in the past with certain, certain, I don't know, uh, members of the community that were kind of like stirring up the pot a little bit more. And the, the hexican community kind of evolved around them and kind of, kind of uh, did their own free market, kind of thing on, on what to support and what not to. So, so yeah, I guess as far as wrapping up, uh, anyone can find me at either youtube.com slash ballet at brand, twitch.tv slash ballet at brand, uh, dlive.tv slash ballet at brand. Uh, I've got a website called ballet brand.com. I've never developed any websites or anything. So it's just, it's really run of the mill kind of templated right now, but I want to uh, get like my, my stream schedule and, there, there's a blog section on, on the website too that, that I kind of want to start contributing to. But uh, like I said, I just said that like, like, like a week or two weeks ago. So that, that uh, the implementation and the changes and the updates on the website is kind of going to happen more, more slow than I'd like it to, but yeah, anyone can find me there. And then on Twitter, just twitter.com slash ballet brand. And, 
And uh, yeah, I try to try to support the community as much as possible. I mean, I see that right now, you know, myself and Joe are doing our stream and uh, and it's it's cool, as I was mentioning, that sometimes if, if that's our problem is that we've and it's not even necessarily a problem. But if that's what we have in the community is three different sets of hexagons streaming at one time, I think that's not only like powerful and cool, but I think that's something that we might be able to uh, communicate in the future and kind of just divvy it out a little bit more. So it would be more beneficial for everyone to watch, but um, yeah, I appreciate everyone. What's my only fan. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, stay, let's stay with the Photoshop. The Photoshop looks better than the. <laughs> yeah. That's a good problem for our community to have. And uh, you know, just to take the counterpoint on what brand said, uh, Benny Blanco, old man, Hexarican. Uh, who else was saying that they would come on? I'm going to, I am going to track you guys down. I am going to, you know, keep communicating with you every day. Uh, old man, Hex. If, uh, you know, if you guys aren't following me on Twitter, it's at Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Hexotic Joe. Um, you can find all of my live links here at, um, let me set this up at joehexotic.com. And, uh, you know, if we, please reach out if you want to, if you want to get on a stream one time and not go live, I'd be willing to help you just set up and walk you through StreamYard and get the audio right. You can go on under a pseudo name, you know, nobody will even know you what you're doing and you can just check it out. And if you're an expert in anything outside of Hex, then I really encourage you to do this. I would love to see, you know, hexlive.tv when it launches the website for the recurring live shows and funding Gary, excuse me, funding Jim, Gary, what he's working on. I would love for that to be filled up with content that is hex centric, but also allows us to all expand our minds. You know, if you're a tattoo artist out there, uh, it's a great opportunity for you to teach somebody how to tattoo. You can have a nice little following on social media. You can expand other people's minds. You can provide entertainment and you can talk hex while you're doing it. You know, if you're an artist, if you're a painter, um, you know, anything that's your passion, I encourage you to try it and, and reach out to Bran or I. And, uh, yeah, looking at David's, what's your only fan? What's your only fan page, Bran? Take, so, take my money. A, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> take my money. Um, so someone had a comment, I guess, as we're closing out, but I kind of just want to address it since it's to me. Um, so Hexy Rican says, what does Bran – look forward to the most with Hex? And that's actually a really, really, really good question. So to, to, to do a long story short, the thing that I look forward to most is what I look forward to most uh, currently now, which is the community. Um, you know, I've developed a lot of friendships and it's been fun to, to support a lot of the people that are streaming uh, on, on, uh, on here uh, on a daily basis. But um, what I look forward to most, the, the reason that that question, like some, some people might just think, oh yeah, I'm looking forward to the, the mad gains and the Lambo and the, the, you know, all these different things that might come with, uh, having a lot of money. And I think that's gonna, I think <laughs> as far as betting on horses go, this is definitely the right horse. And, and I, uh, a lot of the gains have already happened, but, but yeah, I think, along with the mad gains and along with um, in higher lifestyle and things like that is, is uh, the community and, and kind of sticking true to, you know, what we say we're going to do or kind of just checking up on the hexagons, like for, for yourself and Maddie, um, you know, it's cool that you spun off to do your own show. I mean, I know you and Maddie are st still doing the Thursday, Thursday show, but I think it's cool that someone like yourself was, was willing to get out there and and uh, battle the anxiety. So, so I guess to answer your question, Hexy Rican, um, what I look forward to most is just I like people in general, but especially if we share the same common interest, uh, I, I look forward to meeting more Hexicans. And any time, like when I saw your guys' stream, you and Maddie, uh, it was really cool. Even if you're only like the first or second viewer, it's really cool to have that opportunity that like okay, there's only one or two people watching now or three people watching. Um, but, you know, I've got the opportunity with all the other hexagons that know me and that I know to share this. And 
there's almost like a uh, huge compound effect when uh, when Big Pep was streaming. Similar story. I I'd, I'd kind of found his stream first, and and I didn't really see many other people in the live streams. And it's a it's a fun experience with the with the people that do follow me to uh, to post hexkin content and and on uh, yeah on my Twitter I pretty much just keep it keep it hex specific. Uh, it's similar to uh, what Hexologist does, where you know we're we're just uh, staying staying true to to hex and not talking about super divisive stuff like religion and politics. That can usually that can usually can um, lead to like a, a huge divide or like my side versus your side. So um, I look forward to meeting the community. Um, the only person I've met in person was RG three. That was great. Him and wow, I. Wow, really? That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Um, I know you said you got in a, a f couple of months back, but it was maybe four or five months ago. I've got got a, uh, I've actually got the photo um, printed out and whatnot at my house. It, it's not here, but yeah, myself and RG three, RG three was working a different job at the time, and he said he was in the Seattle area for a little bit, and and I live in S Seattle with my girlfriend or at my house in in downtown Bellevue, and you know got a burger, and it was cool because. Similar to, to you feeling like nervous sometimes. Uh, and I knew that I shouldn't have felt this way, but I was, I was kind of nervous. Like, okay, uh, we see how these people are on stream, but in real life, they could be totally different. And it was just really assuring and really fun to, to similar with, with you and myself. You said, you know, um, this is our only first interaction on camera, but you feel like you know each other. Uh, right. off of the camera and from the streams that I've done and the streams that you've done. So it's really cool that uh, we've had meetups. Like I said, uh, RG3 was the only one that I've met, but that's not going to be the last person I meet. I mean, I I'd love to uh, love to meet some of the, the hexacans and, and do a West Coast hangout and things like that. And I just look forward to the community as a whole. I mean, uh, Hexologist talks about, and you just mentioned it, that a lot of us do have Quattro Cinco stakes and, you know, I'm definitely on that, on that list as well. And I'm not going anywhere. I mean, if you can find a community that can uplift you and, and also keep you in check as well and, uh, and help you get what you want and, and go where you're going, then I think you should stick with that. And uh, that's what the Hex community has, has done for me and what it's been for me uh, as someone that's got three older brothers uh, I've always been able to take jokes and give them back to and and uh, the the community itself. You you know you're around a good group of people when when like the the jokes that they they mention they're like catered to you. It's not just a random, you know. So absolutely, it's really fun to grow with the community, and that's what I look forward to most. Yeah, absolutely. That must have been awesome to meet RG. I, there's nobody in our community I'd appreciate meeting more. He's you know, he's a, a short-term hero for me. He's somebody that has helped me, like I said, uh, get comfortable and want to, you know, I had a goal to someday go on Discourse Syndicate and I'd love to to meet him in person. And Bran, I, I urge you up in the Seattle area, make that hangout happen. You know, you're a leading member in the Hexican community. If you say that we're going to have a, you know, a Northwest meetup, um, you can make that happen. I, I typically live in the Northeast. If I decide that I'm not going to move down to Florida, you know, I'll do the same up in the Northeast. And I know that Hexo is vacationing to Orlando. Um, he's coming down February 17th. So he's going to, you know, put a hangout together. David Morales and I are going to be headed over there. Um, Maddie's even talking about flying down maybe and, you know, and staying in the area and coming down for Florida vacation over that time. So, you know, if anybody hasn't heard of that yet, um, you want more details, reach out to Hexo. He's the one planning it. I'm not sure where it'll take place other than Orlando on February 17th, which is a Wednesday. And, uh, you know, Brand, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Uh, really enjoyed it. I'm sure we'll do this again. And I just want to say, uh, again, what an inspiration and, and what a great member of the Hexkin community you are. We're, we're all very lucky to have you here and just want to thank you. Well, yeah, thank you, Joe. Uh, thank you for the opportunity for, for me to come on your show. And, and that is the cool thing that you mentioned. Uh, yourself and David Feeder will be spinning off something uh, in the future. The The cool thing about the like like myself and Nardo, that was the first time I've ever streamed with, uh, with Nardo. But the cool thing about that is 
it, it won't, it definitely won't be the last. And, and same thing for, for yourself and myself. I mean, you know, this is our first time doing this, uh, this stream and this, this uh, setup of a stream, but who knows in the future when you have your uh, discourse syndicate style uh, spinoff, you know, we'll definitely make this happen again. And it's cool to, uh, to break the ice in the community uh, when it's with one person specifically, because then you just feel so much more comfortable, like with yourself and Maddie, but yeah. you, you get to, to know people. And then, and then you really realize like, Oh, okay. Like a lot of people in this community were, were thinking very similar things. And a lot of us have similar goals and, and, and what better to, uh, to learn and grow from than other people that share similar ideals. So, so I uh, really want to thank you for, for having me on the show. I know, uh, yeah, I know what you're doing is, is really cool and, and I appreciate what you're doing, man. It's, it's, it's not only inspiring to hear your story about like the, the suicidal stuff and, and the things that you mentioned, but, but um, it's cool that, that uh, we've got a lot of people in the community that are experienced. Like you mentioned um, being embarrassed that you didn't know Gary or funding Jim or gifting you hex uh, when, when you were shouting him out on the 24 hour stream. And someone else mentioned that how can you remember a whole bunch of different names when, when there are so many hexagons to shout out. And I agree with, but one of the other things that's really cool is the, the charity aspect. Like I mentioned Gary or, or funding Jim. Uh, one thing that he does is for the donations, he's got a Ethereum address, but for the donations that, that he does, he'll, he'll stake it and then eventually give those proceeds to, uh, to a like charity that helps with suicide prevention and, so I donated a little bit to him uh, the other day, but but for for the people that aren't willing to come uh, come on on the camera or are just too nervous, things like that, it's totally understandable. But if you if you uh, find something that you might be able to help out with, like uh, like Kool Aid, the one that's helping out with with Maddie's backdrop, and then that did that did RG 3s backdrop and Joker, uh, people like people like him. He, they've been on camera a couple times, but sometimes we can really.